Diane here. I'm hoping this becomes one of your favorite go-to chicken recipes. It's fast, easy, very economical, and it's sort of one of those one-pot wonders where you're not trashing your entire kitchen to have something really tasty. So let me show you how I do it. What you're going to do is put a heavy bottom pan on a burner on medium low heat and then drizzle a little bit of, I personally like extra virgin olive oil because I think it's really good. Now don't walk away from this because the last thing you wanna do is put oil in a pan, get it too hot and walk away, bad news. So then while that's warming up, you're going to dust your chicken thighs with a little salt. I personally really like kosher salt and some fresh ground pepper. Pat them into the skin so that it adheres to the skin. Do the same thing on the underside. Kosher salt, one thing with that is if you slip because of whatever happens, it won't be as bad as slipping with fine salt. The fresh cracked pepper, that just goes without saying because it's so much more fragrant. And then we're gonna dust these chicken thighs with a little bit of flour, just plain old all-purpose flour, not a lot. And we're going to press the flour and the salt into the chicken, turn them over, our pan's still getting warm, and then dust the tops of them with a little bit of flour. This doesn't take a lot of flour, but you want that little bit of flour because that's gonna be your slight thickener of the sauce. Put a pat of butter, about a tablespoon, into the pan and swirl it around. Let that melt with the oil. You want the oil because that takes the heat and olive oil gives you the flavor. And also butter helps browning and adds quite a bit of flavor. And it's not that much so between five of these chicken thighs it's really not a lot of butter. So Dust off now your chicken thighs of the excess flour. And then what you wanna do is take the pan and swirl the butter and the oil around to evenly mix them in the pan. Now the way you know that the pan is hot enough is when the butter subsides, when the sizzling subsides, then the pan is hot enough. So listen for, you won't hear any sizzling whatsoever. Then put the chicken thighs in the pan skin side down. You definitely want to do the skin down first. And after they're browned on the skin side, turn them over and brown them on the bottom side. Shouldn't take probably more than four or five minutes to do them, depending on how hot your pan is, but you've got to have it hot. And if the skin sticks, just wait a little bit, not ready to be turned. In the meantime, while those were browning, I sliced up some shallot and a small onion. Shallot is like a cross between an onion and garlic, a little bit more flavor than onion, but not as potent as garlic. It's perfect for this dish. And I always keep them around because they hold up well. So into the pan goes the onion and shallot. This really makes a nice mix with the lemon. And what we're gonna do is brown these well because we want the flavor of the browning to enhance the sauce. All the brown bits that were in the bottom of the pan from the flour and the chicken stay there because that is, again, going to help thicken your sauce up. So you wanna to learn to flip the, the onions or whatever you have in the pan. It makes it faster and easier. And after a couple tries, you'll get really good at it. And I'm breaking up the little bits of onion that I didn't necessarily get the entire root off with. And these are gonna soften really nice in the oven. I happen to have a nice dry, really dry, wonderful rosé in the refrigerator. So I'm using that to deglaze the pan. You don't have to, but I really like wine. If anything, it should be white wine. I'm putting in a little water because I don't happen to have any chicken stock made. So the little water, and then we're gonna follow that with about a tablespoon of chicken bouillon base. Uh, the base is real easy. You keep it in your in your cupboard. You don't even have to refrigerate it. 
And when you just don't have time to make stock, which of course is better, this better than bullion is pretty good stuff, fast and easy. Now you want to put that in, you could use another, another container and dissolve it in water, but it's not necessary. Just put it in the pan, stir it around, swish it around, put your chicken breast back in. Then these are going to go to a 400 oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. And I'm taking these couple of pieces out so that I get, have an even distribution of the onion on the bottom of the pan. You want skin side up because you've got, right now got a really nice crackly skin. It is so good. Squeeze a lemon on it and to the oven. Now, after it comes out of the oven, you have this wonderful sticky sauce, but you do need to thin this out a little bit. And what you're going to do, I poured a little bit of water because the flavors are already condensed and that water is going to deglaze the pan. You're going to get all those little brown bits off the bottom and off the side of the pan while heating that water up. And that is going to add unbelievable flavor to this sauce. Now, I personally like capers. I just think they're wonderful. I think the texture is great. Little salty, briny, little bursts of joy in your mouth. They're just heaven. And so I go a little heavy handed on the capers, but put those in the pan while it's warming. Heat everything up really well. And then keep an eye on the sides of the pan. Make sure you have all that flavor off the side by stirring it around and kind of scraping the edges of the pan. You want to taste it because all good cooks taste their sauce. Make sure you've got it right. It really shouldn't need anything because you have all the flavor from the pre-seasoning the chicken breast. But warm the sauce up. As it warms, it will thicken beautifully. And it's going to come up to the consistency of a slightly thinner heavy cream, but the longer it's in the pan, the thicker it will get. You could add butter to enhance this, but it's really not necessary. So there you have it. It's so easy and so good. You just won't believe it. This should become one of your favorites. And you can serve this with some extra lemon wedges on the side because an extra squeeze of fresh lemon is always wonderful. And get a vegetable. You can do some rice on the side. I did some jasmine rice and there you have it. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and share and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for joining me.